These are the 3D Viewmaster stories, Bobby the Bunny, Skibby the Squirrel, and the Little Red Hen. Bobby the Bunny, enacted by real-life animal actors. Viewmaster Reel 1 Picture 1 Bobby Bunny hibbity hopped out of his tree stump. It was Easter morn and there was a basket filled with colored eggs. The Easter Bunny left it for you, Mama Rabbit told Bobby. Eggs are the symbol of new life. So each Easter, he and his helpers paint them in gay colors. Then they deliver them to bunnies and all their friends. Who is the Easter Bunny? asked Bobby his nose excited and wiggling. I must find him so I can thank him. Picture 2 Bobby hibbity hopped over to the duckling. I'm looking for the Easter Bunny so I can thank him for the basket. Do you know where I can find him? He came while my head was still tucked under my wing, the duckling said. But I don't think he is a rabbit that lives close by, because I don't recognize any of the eggs. Picture 3 Bobby asked the puppy, Do you know where I can find the Easter Bunny? It's very important. No, said the puppy, trying to think. He came while I was asleep, so he must be a rabbit. I see every day. I always wake up and bark at anything strange. Bobby scold. You and the duckling are no help, no help at all. Hibbity hop. Off he went to ask his other friends about the Easter Bunny. Picture 4. Papa Rabbit, his secret mission all taken care of, came to his home in the hollow log. He was very tired. He yawned. He stretched out in the warm sun and took a nap. Poor Papa. He fell so sound asleep, he didn't see the artist, he didn't hear him. Picture 5 And the paint dripped down on Papa's snow-white fur. Papa dreamed he was chasing a rainbow. It led him to a land all growing with leduce carrots and green peas. He imagined he was nibbling cabbage leaves, clover leaves and Canterbury bells. Waking up, he did not realize he was colored like an Easter egg. Picture 6 Papa hopped over to visit the duckling and the puppy. The moment they saw the strange-looking rabbit, they let out scared cries. Quack, quack, went the duckling, hiding in the underbrush. Yip, yip, went the puppy, fleeing down the path. Papa's long ears drooped, sadly at the odd behavior of his two friends. Picture 7 Bobby had asked all of his friends, but not a one knew the Easter Bunny. He hibbity hopped down the path toward home. Then he saw Papa a rabbit. Papa, it's you! Bobby's nose, his ears, his whiskers wiggled with excitement. You're the Easter Bunny! Papa really was the Easter Bunny, but it was supposed to be a secret. However did you know? he asked Bobby. You look like an Easter Bunny, said Bobby, touching Papa's fur. Thank you for the lovely basket. Papa's mission was no longer a secret, and the next year Bobby was the Easter Bunny's best helper. The Little Red Hen, Viewmaster Reel 2, Picture 1. There was once a little red hen who found a grain of wheat. Cluck, cluck, she called. Who will help me plant this wheat seed? Not I, quacked the duck. 
Not I grunted the big. Not I meowed the cat. Then I will, said the red hen. Cluck, cluck. Picture two. Soon the wheat seeds sprouted and green leaves came out of the warm earth. Cluck, cluck, called the little red hen. Who will water and tend the wheat? Not I, quacked the duck. Not I, grunted the pig. Not I, meowed the cat. Then I will, said the red hen. Cluck, cluck. Picture three. The wheat grew and grew until it was tall and golden and ripe. Cluck, cluck, called the little red hen. Who will harvest the wheat? Not I, grunted the pig. Not I, quacked the duck. Purr, purr, I'm too comfortable, meowed the cat. Then I will, said the red hen. Cluck, cluck, picture four. The little hen took the sickle and went out into the hot sun and cut the wheat. Cluck, cluck, she cried. Who will take the wheat to the mill to have it ground? The pig did not answer. The duck did not answer. The cat did not answer. They were all fast asleep. I'll carry it myself, said the red hen. Cluck, cluck. Picture five. When the little red hen returned from the mill, the wheat was ground into a bag of flour. Cluck, cluck, she called. Who will help me bake a loaf of bread? Not I, quacked the duck. Not I, grunted the pig. Not I, meowed the cat stretching out in the corner. Then I will, said the red hen. Cluck, cluck. Picture six. The loaf of bread was baked. The pig, the cat and the duck all crowded close around the oven. Oink, oink, it smells so good, grunted the pig, licking his chops. It will be most delicious with a big bowl of milk, meowed the cat. Quack, quack, I can hardly wait, said the duck. Picture seven. We will help you eat the loaf of bread, said the duck, the cat and the pig. Cluck, cluck, oh no, you don't, said the little red hen. I planted and watered and tended the wheat. I reaped it, I carried it to the mill, and I baked a loaf of bread. Now I will eat it, cluck, cluck. And she did. Skibby the Squirrel, enacted by a real-life animal actor. Fewmaster 3. Picture 1. Skibby lived in a great forest where oak, hickory, and walnut trees grew. All spring and summer, Skibby played. He raced up and down the tree trunks with other gray squirrels. He leaped from limb to limb in endless games of tag and hide and seek. Although he was unbelievably sure-footed, Skibby often fell. Then, while still in the air, he would spread his four legs wide to flatten his body, and his enormous tail would fluff out to its full extent to become a sort of parachute. Instead of rocketing to the ground, Kerplunk, Skibby would almost float down unhurt. Even after a fall from the top of a tall oak tree, Skibby would scamper back up the tree, not even, even limping. Picture 2. A reddish-brown leaf fell. Skibby's bright eyes watched it settle to the ground. Winter's coming, he said to himself. That means no more buds or berries or seeds to eat. Grandpa Squirrel always told us to start gathering nuts when the first leaf fell. Picture 3. Inside his hollow tree home, Skibby sighed a little. 
There would be no more games with the other squirrels. Now the busy days of autumn were upon him. First of all, he made a little nest in which to store his winter supply of acorns. Picture 4 From sunrise to sunset, Skibby was a grey streak up and down the red and gold leaf nut trees. He harvested, harvested acorns, hickory nuts and walnuts. With fall also came the hunters. Now work became dangerous, but Skibby could take care of himself. No other squirrel was as good as at sliding. Etching around a trunk to steal a quick look at an enemy without being seen. No statue was better at freezing, remaining motionless after a noisy, leaf-rattling chump. Hunters might occasionally hear Skibby, but they had small chance of actually seeing the little squirrel. Picture 5 Skibby went about the business of storing nuts in a very businesslike manner. Some he carried in his mouth to his hollow tree warehouse. Others he buried where they fell. Each buried nut had to be carefully licked to put his seal upon it. Then, digging a hole three inches deep, he buried them. Each hole was filled and hidden with scattered leaves. Picture 6 Now and then, Skibby stopped to eat. In fact, he ate two or even three of every dozen nuts that he gathered. Each nut had to be carefully inspected. If he found one that was cracked, he would crack its shell and eat the kernel right then and there. Skibby knew that a cracked nut would spoil in storage. Picture 7 Snug and warm in the heart of a tree, Skibby looked out on a white, cold world. A foot of snow covered the ground, for it was winter. The little squirrel enjoyed winter. He had plenty of nuts in his hollow tree and knew where to find more outside. Many times during the winter, Skibby would scurry around across the snow to a place that was familiar to him. With little sniffs to his, of his tiny nose, he would pick up the scent of a nut that was buried in the ground under a foot of snow. Tunneling down into the snow, Skibby would disappear and soon come up again, ruffled and with his fur, coated with snow. In his mouth would be a nut he had buried months before. Now, Skibby lived in a forest of oak, hickory and walnut trees, and it was squirrels like Skibby that had planted this forest. The squirrel's ability to find the nuts he buried is marvelous, but still many are lost. The great hardwood forests of America have sprung from the nuts buried and lost by little gray squirrels just like Skibby. We want to add new videos every day, so please subscribe to our channel. And if you had fun, thumbs up.